Hey, how does one normally start a YouTube video exactly? Hey, usually, YouTubers start by greeting their viewers, introducing the topic of the video, and giving a brief overview of what viewers can expect to see. So what would that look like if I was building a voice chat application using JavaScript? For a YouTube video on building a voice chat application using JavaScript, you could start by saying something like, Hey everyone, today we're diving into creating a voice chat application using JavaScript. I'll walk you through the... Okay, I think you guys get the idea. We're going to build something like this today. Are you ready to get started? Let's go into it. All right, I'm going to start off by showing you the HTML and the CSS for the app. I stuffed both the HTML and the CSS all into one file just for convenience sake. In our HTML, we have our toggle button, we have our, our speech visualizer on the side, and then we're going to have a div containing all of our chat history, which is going to grow as we talk to our chat bot. Here is the CSS. Nothing terribly important to know about here, but if you want to create this exact UI, you can definitely take a moment and capture all of these properties here. And lastly, we have a secret JS file, and that's where I contain the API key that I need to use OpenAI and power the chatbot. I'm not going to show you the file itself because it contains my personal key, but you can just write your secret JS file exactly like this, and then it should just work. Now we're going to go through how to make the functionality and fill out our app.js file right here. So before I write a single line of code, I'm going to explain all the steps that we're going to follow. And this is generally good practice if you write slightly complicated software. So first, the user is going to click the start button, and then the start button will turn into a stop button. And then we're going to start recording the user. OK, so the first, the user is going to speak their query into the AI. And what that's going to mean is we're going to turn on our mic, our speech recognition, and this is the point where it'll ask for permission if you don't have permissions on audio recording yet. Then as we record, we're going to visualize the sound while we're capturing the query. And then the query is going to be captured using our speech to text capability. And then we're going to pass that query off to our AI. And then AI is going to respond. We're going to, the query is going to be sent off to OpenAI. And once the query is received, the response is going to be spoken with the speech synthesis API. And then when it's finished speaking, it's going to pass back to the user. And we're just going to repeat steps two and three until the user clicks the stop button. All right, so let's start making this. All right, so let's start off with the state, which I pre-wrote for time's sake. I'm grabbing my three elements since we're going to do stuff with them later. I'm going to grab our toggle button, our visualizer, and our chat history. And then I'm also going to create a separate variable for our speech synthesis object, which is what we're going to use to make our chatbot talk back. It's going to appear in the window already, so you can just grab it from there. Is chatting is how we're going to keep track of whether we are chatting or not. Currently speaking is how we keep track of who's speaking, whether the user, which would be me, or the assistant, which is what how OpenAI refers to their chatbot. We also have our speech object, which is where we're going to store our speech recognition object that will enable us to do speech to text. Um, this context is going to be used for audio visualization, same with stream and animation ID. And then chat history is where we're going to store our chat history in memory for the app. So right now, as you can see, it is going to be an array of objects, and each object is going to contain a role and content. Role is going to be either user or assistant, but when you're establishing a base prompt, it's recommended that you call it system. And this is basically saying just give a short response to every question and make it conversational. All right, so we're going to kick this off by adding an event listener to our toggle button. And that's going to look like this toggle button dot add event listener. It's going to be a click event. We're passing our function. And we're, all we're going to do here is flip the chatting state like so. And we're going to check to see if ch is chatting is true. We are going to run our start chat function, which we haven't written yet, but we will. Otherwise, we're going to run our stop chat function, which we are also going to write. Now let's start writing our start chat function. So we're going to go function start chat. And that is going to look like this toggle button is going to become oh toggle button inner text is going to be stop. 
And then we are also gonna add our speech recognition object, new speech recognition, like that. And I should also mention that if you're using Firefox, speech recognition is not gonna work because Firefox doesn't support it. So use Chrome or Safari or anything else really, but everything else should work. And now we're gonna write a function called let user speak, which is going to encapsulate everything that I mentioned in my steps earlier. All right, so now let's write our let user speak function. So we're gonna make this async because there's async stuff happening in there. Uh, let user speak. And that is going to start off with setting the state currently speaking to user, okay? And now what we're gonna write some code to start our visualization. And instead of talking through everything, I'm just gonna copy paste this. If you're curious about diving deeper into sound visualizations and how they work, I do have a video for that called How to Visualize Sound. I highly encourage you to check it out if you're interested in that sort of thing. Oh, we also need the update user bubble function. And this is what the actual animation is gonna look like. So again, if you wanna learn more about how this works, I do have a video. So now we're gonna set up our speech, okay? So now we're gonna do speech object dot start. And this is how you tell it to start recording. We also need a function that tells us what to do when the speech recognition object captures a result. So that's gonna look like this, speech object dot on result equals, and we're just gonna create a function called transcribe. I like giving these functions names because it's more obvious what they do. Now we're gonna get our transcript, const transcript equals, and it's gonna be in the results, in the results key, and it's gonna be nested like this. Yeah, and there should be a transcript key in there. And now we are going to append the transcript to not only our in-memory in chat history, but also to our DOM. So we're gonna be doing this a lot, so I'm actually gonna, I'm actually going to create a function that encapsulates all of that. And that function is going to look like this right here, append content. It's gonna accept an object that has a role and content. We're gonna push it into our chat history. And then we're gonna create a new DOM element. We're gonna add the content as inner text. We're gonna add our classes so that they can look different. And then we're gonna append this content to our chat history. Okay, that's all that's happening here. So we can just write append content and that's gonna be uh, role is currently speaking and then content is going to be what we transcribe trans transcript transcript yeah that's what it's called all right and then we also have to clean up our recording so we're going to write a function called stop recording instead of writing it all out i'm just going to copy paste it right here so stop recording basically all that's happening here is we're telling it to stop visualizing stop recording and reset the visualizer to its initial state. That's all we're doing here. St oh, stop user recording. That's what that's called. All right. And then finally, we are going to write, run a function called let AI speak. All right, now let's write our let AI speak function. And that's gonna look like this function. No, it's an async function because we're making our AI call here. Async function let AI speak, and that is gonna go like this. So currently speaking is gonna be our assistant. Okay, and now let's actually make the call to open AI. So const response equals await fetch. And now let's pass in the link to the API endpoint, which is so. And then we're gonna create our object. Method is going to be post. All right, and now we have to send JSON over there. So body is, and we're gonna do json.stringify, create our object, and it's gonna contain our model and our chat history. 
So the model is going to be GPT 3.5 Turbo because that's the cheapest model and I don't want to spend a lot of money. And then messages is going to be our chat history, just like that. And then we also have to add in some headers. I'm just going to copy paste this because this is just regular stuff you need for an API call. Content's going to be application JSON and you need a way to authenticate. So I'm passing in my OpenAI API key, just like that. All right. Now, once that's done, we have to get the JSON. And actually, instead of creating a separate variable, I'm going to wrap all of this like this and then dot JSON like that. So now it's just all in one, all in one move. All right, so now let's get our content out. So that's gonna be content. This is the response from OpenAI. It's gonna be response dot choices, first, first in the array, dot message. And then this should have a content key and that's gonna be the result of your query. So now let's append that, append content, and the role, whoop, role is currently speaking, which is assistant. Again, this is how OpenAI understands chat history. And then content is, yeah, content. Now that we have a response, we want our computer to speak the response. So this is how it's gonna go. Const spoken response equals new speech synthesis utterance, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass this utterance into the speak function of our voice right up here, all right? So we're gonna pass in our content because that's what we want it to speak. Uh, and we also have to have a function that we can run once it ends. So I'm gonna do spoken response dot on end is going to be a function where all we do is run let user speak so that way we're just passing it back to the user and of course we have to make the voice speak so we're going to do voice dot speak spoken response all right so now we're almost done here we basically have the flow going now all that's left to do is to write our stop chat function all right, so it's gonna go like this. Function stop chat. Um, so what we wanna do is if the user is speaking, we want to stop the recording from happening. If the AI is speaking, we want to stop that from speaking. And then we wanna reset all the necessary state. So that's gonna go like this. So if currently speaking equals user, we're gonna just stop user recording. I am so glad I abstracted that into a function. I would go crazy if I didn't. So now we also have to stop our voice from speaking. So we're gonna check to see if it's speaking. If it's speaking, we're going to stop it by running the cancel method on it. And now because no one is currently speaking, currently speaking is gonna be set to null. And then we're gonna reset our speech object, turn that to null. And then last but not least, we're gonna change the inner text of the toggle button to read start, just like it did before. So if you did everything right, it should go something like this. How do you end a YouTube video? You can end a YouTube video by inserting an end screen with links to other videos or a subscribe button. You can also verbally conclude the video and thank viewers for watching. So how can I say thank you for watching? You can say something like, thank you so much for watching, or I appreciate you tuning in at the end of your video. What if I want people to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel? You can encourage viewers to like, comment, and subscribe by saying something like, don't, don't forget, forget to like. like comment, comment and, and subscribe for, for more content, content like, like this. this at the end of your video you can also add visual reminders on the screen